Hi, Ahmad. Welcome to this debriefing session. Uh, Ahmad, uh, for the viewers, uh, has been an EG Math student, um, a bright one at that. She started at a score of 680 and you know, managed to get to a score of 750 with a score breakup of Q50 and V40. So managed a 90 percentile plus uh, you know, score in verbal. And verbal was where most of his improvement came in. Like, you know, he went from a V36 to a V40 which was, I think, uh, very commendable in the way he went about it. Three main things, I think, that played a role in his improvement were the course, the Sigma X mock that were able to predict his performance, get, give him the detailed and specific insights that he needed, um, working on hyper-specific plans, and uh, using uh, using error log. We'll first, uh, Mohammed, before we get into the entire discussion. Let us first uh, understand how did you start with GMAT prep? When did you start? What did you do when you just started? How did you decide that you're going to take the EGMAT course and what followed? Yeah, so yeah, so thank you, Aditi. Thank you for this opportunity for sharing my journey. So thank you for this. Uh, so basically, my journey started around in 2020. So that's where I decided that I wanted to go for an MBA. So obviously, I went to, like I went to internet and searched about it and I think most of the aspirants go to GMAT club so that's where I went and I started searching what are the best courses available so I think uh, EGMAT's name comes from the top right away and being an Indian students one of the core problem everyone faces is verbal so that's where my, my major focus was and I was searching which is the best course and that's where I came to know about EGMAT and right away I purchased the course and got started with it. So that was my like first part of the journey. So what I did is basically, that's where I did my first mistake, I would say. So I did, I took the course and I started doing the exercises and all those things right away without really understanding, because uh, I think EGMAT has a very particular approach about things. So they have different sort of quizzes. Uh, you are supposed to attend them at certain junctures in your preparation. So that was a bit haphazard. That's that's what I would consider during my first part of the journey. Uh, that's where I scored seven ten. So uh, that is that uh, again. Second thing was that that was the time of uh, COVID, and I had like two online attempts only. So I did not want to waste my second attempt. So I repurchased the course, and that's where my methodical approach started. So Got what it. I did the so first the thing, first yeah. for first time around, yeah. you did not follow the three stages of learning. You being mm -hmm. a bright student, you went through the course, you took a few quizzes, you could still get a, a you know, 710, powered majorly by Quant, because you're an engineer by background, so Quant score came, Quant was more natural for you. Verbal, not a bad score, V36, to be honest, but it was more because of your own innate abilities in it, and whatever little yeah. bit that you went through the course, and the exercises that you did helped you get that. Yeah, right? And you went for the test. If I remember correctly, you did attempt uh, Sigma X mock before this test, and most of the scores ranged around 710, with the last three mocks being at two 710s and one 720. Yeah, so that was also one of the uh, like good thing about the EGMAT course. So because uh, if because you, what happens is in any course, if you see, you know, what happens is uh, it's it's usually the concern that the pro, uh, mocks are too hard or they are too easy. So that was something because I did not know priorly that whether it was too hard or too easy it was something which came in retrospect that indeed it was matching with my uh, like whatever my score was and what happened in actuality it matched so that was one of the reasons why i uh, went ahead with repurchasing the course right and i think this time your learning was if the mocks are telling you that you're not at the score you want to be at yeah you need to work yeah, towards yeah. it right exactly 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 so tell me what happened in your second attempt then uh, when you started again yeah, so when I restarted the whole thing, so I wanted to start afresh. So I repurchased the thing and it was a blank state for me. So first of all, one thing which I would even suggest somebody uh, purchasing this course is to go through, because there is an introduction module. I, I'm not remembering what was the name of that. Your module. GMAT so roadmap is, course. Yeah, your GMAT roadmap. So you should go through that diligently because when you are in a hurry, you know, because I was also in a hurry, I don't want to waste my time. Somebody telling me, do this, do that. So I just don't, I didn't want to waste time, but that really saves a lot of time in the long run. I think this is so, a very pertinent, very important point that you mentioned. When you are methodical, it may seem like it's taking more time, but in the long run, it saves you a lot of time because if you're not studying properly in the beginning, 
to come back to it because you faltered later on to come back to it and study again usually takes longer and takes multiple yeah. attempts as well so yeah I means any student who is listening to think i can comfort I means completely understand the anxiety attached with it because if you are in so hurry to like to reach to the end line of your race but uh, but take it from me it, it does not happen like that so you should like go through whatever is being told be methodical go through that road map journey understand how to approach the course once you understand how to approach the course then start doing things step by step so i think uh, that that's where eg mat for me helped a lot because i have a pretty grueling schedule because i work in isro as a scientist so it's very difficult to find time and uh, so I, there was a bit of faith i had to place which usually i would not give i was i would trust my own instincts but yeah so i placed the faith and it paid off right so this attempt um you primarily needed help with verbal right so you started with sc and i think sc was your problem area uh, yeah, to begin was, with but you did yeah, have to put in some amount of effort in cr and rc2 so because you had gone through the quizzes and some bit of the course the first time around did you think what did you think what was your approach this time around Should, would you be going through the course again not going through the course again what yeah, was so, what your mindset about yeah. it yeah, so one catch point was there that there was a significant amount of gap in between because i was too much involved in my work so there was launches happening and just too i was too overwhelmed so i simply could not pick it up so i did not remember anything word to word there was a sense of understanding but i don't i didn't remember the questions i didn't remember what was the body or what was the subject or what was the verb but understanding was there but even though i remembered those rules i chose to go through them again because i i understood that definitely there was something lacking in my understanding otherwise i would have scored 750 at that time itself so i chose to go through those concepts one by one refresh and did not try to like uh, jump ahead that okay ye to aata hai why should i do it again so that is something i actively oppose myself so that's people tend to do that that okay ye to aata hai just skipped through and went ahead so I, what my understanding was it agar aata hai you can do it faster and that's that's actually very important you need to be able to yeah. do you know things in the right amount of time for the gmat right if you're taking yeah. 10 minutes to solve a question even though you're solving it correct it does not matter so much because you won't get 10 minutes on the test and that cannot be your excuse that if i can take 10 minutes and solve i know something i think that was also the premise of when we started working together in lm program you were already at a 710 score and ability wise there were not there weren't major gaps there was not one or two things that you were only doing wrong and everything else right it was not that kind of a thing you were generally good at stuff but your timing was a little off so i remember when uh, you know we were doing that timing was a main focus so tell me how did you interpret the plan, plan that uh, was shared with you in lm and how did that go yes yeah, so i think it, uh, it may vary person to person because i am a bit analytical person so what happens to when i i really read a sentence so what i used to do is i really went deeper into the question so i was thinking how it, how does it connect and like what are the different parts so i was taking too much time to analyze the questions there was a bit of more understanding involved less instinct but when like when we discussed about the time so i was able to match up that understanding and instinct so there was a little bit of work around that and that came naturally i won't say it was forced but it came naturally once you start going under that timeline like ta ki time is there no where you know like you are supposed to and it within 1 minute and 30 second or something like that so when you force yourself under that uh, like pressure or time consideration you start like jumping ahead also going back also trying to uh, like what do you say individualize your approach to the question combined with the understanding so uh, i think this is something really uh, really important to understand the question like understand the concept very well so that creates a very strong base then you indi- uh, like individualize your learning on top of that and that's where i think that's where score differs from 750 to 760 or like student to student so yeah i i agree what I you're it. saying is what happened was when you were going through the course again because you had that understanding that even if you know you can do it faster that and that is why you went through the course again you went through systematic timing exercises again what happened was at some point you were able to reach that balance that point of uh, you know uh you know where understanding that this is what i know and this is where my when my instinct comes in and instinct is basically your knowledge of the matter yes. that's playing up 
more subconsciously but because that is because you've internalized it so much if you mm-hmm. have not mm-hmm. internalized the con- process you have not internalized the concept that instinct will not work or that instinct exactly, will not exactly. be correct exactly exactly so that will not come this what exactly. happens is when we start or we have an instinct but that is very much unrefined wrong and that's where like gmat plays with you it ask you to go with your raw instinct uh, instinct and that would be wrong so what do you do is you develop this understanding over the month of two uh, two months or three months develop that understanding and then merge it with your own instinct and then how like you start overcoming the time domain or like whatever right strict timing is there right so tell me again um you know how how did it what was your plan before you were going through to the second test and what did you do uh, yeah, what was so, your yeah. plan for to go from 710 to 750 yeah so it was uh, so what i did is the one thing i told uh, as i told you before is i did not go through the uh, like that road map journey road map so because if you see eg matter they have uh, like particular types of quizzes so some custom quizzes are there and some like some quizzes are there which you are supposed to do just right after that and there are some quizzes which are which is supposed to gain your understanding or cementing like, quizzes uh, yeah cementing quizzes yeah that was the one so because what happens is even though you have learned everything you really don't know where you are and you have a finite amount of resources and if you have 100 questions and you just simply waste them like you go through the question now you read it again and you reattempt the question so it won't uh, give you that uh, like return on investment i would say that so what you need to do is you need to go through the procedure then only you will get like bang out of your buck what i did is in the uh, prior attempt is I-, i was haphazardly going through it and i was reattempting the questions again and again i was scoring 100% even but that was not my real score so that's what that's where the major difference was so i went through this uh, the journey road map whatever was there and approached the whole course very methodically so custom like whatever quiz you are supposed to do afterwards that i did first then after completing i went through the semantic quizzes whatever gaps were there i went back read the whole course again filled in then again came back yeah, so i think that's where the difference was right so you kept iterating every time you, if you took a cementing quiz you figured out this is what i'm not able to do right yes. that means i i have some gaps let me go back figure out what the gaps are and then do it and i think um, yeah, yeah. that was not like one like one shot kind of thing i just, exactly. was not like i went through the course and it was over for me right i went through the course went back did the quiz came back again did it again so it was back and forth back and forth perfect i think that iteration is very important because every time you realize you don't know something there's no shame in going back to the file figuring out what is it that you missed and then learning that again and i think error logs played an important part for you in this case right because when you had timing issues we worked through your error log to figure out where is it that you're making uh, you know having problems which particular modules you were facing problems in there were three four modules that we figured out that these are particular topics that you're faltering in this is the reason you're faltering in them or taking longer and then you went back to it you yeah, went you did is, specific yeah, this, yeah, quizzes around where, it yeah. yeah this is where i would like suggest everyone to not believe your instinct because that's where they lie because quantitative data is much better indicator of where you are lacking at so if you have a particular proper error log you can like visually see where you are and if you go back and fill those gaps you will come back stronger so that is something i would suggest everyone right so error log played an important part then i think uh, you again took mocks this time around your mock scores were more in the 750 range right how did that feel when you yeah. were taking all those mocks and you were closer to what you were targeting how did yeah. that feel how did you improve from there on till the test date yeah means uh, it felt actually pretty natural means uh, it did not feel like something else has happened but uh, definitely understanding was much better and my key because uh, means, uh, it 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 differs from student to student for me like quant was pretty sorted very early on so there was not something i had to work upon but my sentence correction really did improve and that started reflecting right away in my scores because few remained the same but we started improving right so yeah right so that gave you confidence that okay if i'm scoring from your first mock you were already you had that learning that if you're scoring something in mock very likely you're going to see those kind of scores in your actual test this time around you were at around the 750 mark you went to give the test you were still around the 750 mark uh, you scored a 750 again on the test so that was great what are the top 3 things uh, emma that you're going to tell the students um, 
just three things that they need to remember yeah, when they so, want to reach that kind of a high score yeah, yeah so first thing is that means the first thing i would say is not to hurry that's what my first thing is that you need to give at least two months i feel like this, <laughs> if you have it may, it may it may vary like if person knows already one month for somebody is fine but for me it was around two months also that we are like you need to have that sort of period second thing is that if you are like particularly buying eg mat or any other course you need to map out your journey like what you are going to do so that helps you a lot because it's a long period of time and you may like veer off the path very easily and third thing is that yeah maintain your error log because yeah. at the end of the day you simply can't remember what question you did two months back and you you won't be able to understand how much you have improved or not so you need to have those sort of feedback so these perfect i, I think um, very very pertinent points uh, the only thing i uh, i mean what i'd like to add to what you've said what you've said is actually perfect don't hurry uh, everybody's journey is different you may take one month two months six months yeah. also the point is knowing where you're starting from and knowing uh, you know where you want to go build that personalized plan based on each subsection what scores you need to target we have a tool called personalized study planner tool so you can use that to do that you also use that uh, ahmed if i'm not yeah. wrong you created a plan based on that so don't hurry very important and a pertinent yeah. point i think error log again very important uh, to track your journey and what you said was perfect that you know what you solved two months ago why did you make a mistake you wouldn't remember so when you do it the second time around or when you're reviewing that error log you understand why you made a mistake and you then can avoid that mistake right so these are important points that you mentioned uh, understanding how a particular course works and following through with it again very very important eg mat mm-hmm. course we we suggest the three stages of learning approach because we know that works that works that has worked for thousands of students and helps them systematically and methodically reach their target score and with more certainty so when you keep constantly achieving the milestones that are set for you you are just making your uh you know final score more certain so i think that is all three points are very very pertinent and i'm sure any, anybody and everybody listening to this will val- um, you know learn a great deal if they follow this really well thank you emma thank you for um, this interview and all the best for your applications and the results that are soon to come uh, we hope you get into the school school that you're targeting yeah So thank you, thank you, Aditi, and yeah, if to all the applicants who so whoever is listening to like this conversation, I would just say that hang on, it's just believe in yourself, you will do good. Yep, great, Mohammed. Thank you. Thank Best you. of luck to everyone who is listening to this.